Hi, I'm Madeline Stewart and I am a comedian, but I also produce accessible comedy shows. Um, I do lots of things, many fingers and all the pies, which is <laughs> ironic because I only have five fingers. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I think what else could I say? I'm a Campbelltown well, girl. Um, someone might have picked up. You've kind of given an inkling to what I your have. disability is. And what is it? I am missing my left forearm, which technically they say is limb deficient, limb which deficient. is like oh. iron deficient. And I don't get it. But no yeah, there to it bring is. back your arm. I wish. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so was that from birth or did you have an accident? Oh, no, I was just born this way. I was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they, is there, I don't know how pregnancy works, but did your parents um, find out that you were going to be, you know, oh, yeah, without no. a forearm? Like, they like, had or... no, they had no idea. My mum had no idea. I was born incredibly early, like something like three months early. Oh, it was insane. Oh. Um, but I, they, to this day, they don't know what happened. A lot what? of the times babies like kick their limbs out of the, the sack and that's what happens. But they don't even know if that happened, really. Mm. It's because Adam Hills was the same. He do, Adam Hills was a previous guest. He doesn't have a foot. Uh, and he's like, doctors still to this day can't explain why. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I've actually just started a, a new company called Able Foods. And we just, our first hire was a girl called Maddie. And guess what? She's limb deficient on the same oh. arm. Oh. There you go. Competition, but she's not as funny. Though, I know. Right? I know, but she is. You didn't know that. She's, great. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's doing really well. Hey, um, so when you were growing up, how did you go with your disability did you ever care about having one arm or did you have a tough time at school um uh, it was a little bit it was a bit of both like I think no I was never bullied at school and I would always like play up to it and I've always loved it it was just always like a, a source of humor and comedy like even as a child um a lot of pranks were played <laughs> a lot of like taking off my prosthetic arm and putting it in people's bags at school <laughs> lots of that kind of thing but I don't think I was ever I don't think I was ever um I don't think I was ever bullied but at the same time I don't think I was ever like made aware of how wonderful um the disabled community is as well like my mum was just like you're normal you're normal but like mm. I would have preferred to have grown up to be like hey you're different and here are all these other people who are different and look how cool they are Hey, it's really interesting. Well, bloody said, because that's my biggest gripe with parents is when I, I meet, like, I met a little girl with cerebral palsy. Her mm. name was Hannah. And I'm like, what's your disability, Hannah? And the mum's like, she's not disabled. She has no disability. I'm like, well, she's in a wheelchair and there's nothing wrong with that. Because that yeah. then puts into her mind mm. that there's a problem with her being disabled. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's true. And I, do you think that society is starting to, you know, change in that way? Well, I hope so. I think people are starting to become more aware. And I, I think just like, like this podcast, there are so many platforms for people with disability to express their, their life experiences or their personality or what, what they're good at. It gives us a highlight. So when I was born in the 90s, I know, I'm so old. No? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not um, in, I was born in the 90s as well. When were you born, Angus? I mean, I was in the 80s. Oh, <laughs> 80s. <laughs> But I remember when I was a kid, I would watch telly and I wouldn't, I couldn't even see anyone like me. It wasn't until I watched Star Wars and Luke Skywalker oh had his prosthetic God. arm. I was like, damn, I'm a Jedi. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's as close as I got. I didn't, yeah, I, I'm kind of jealous of kids who grow up nowadays and they can see themselves everywhere. And I'm like, man, I wish I had that. Yeah. Mm. So you touched on it before. Um, I know this might be a generalization, right? But for leg amputees, they all pretty much use prosthetics, right? To walk around. Yeah. But, you know, in the world that I live in, in, in sport, there's a lot of people that are arm amputees, but not everyone rolls around with a prosthetic. Yeah. Some people just leave their, you know, just use their stump or whatever it is. Mm. So you said you wear a prosthetic. How does an well, arm... I don't use it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you don't use I it. used to. I oh, used to, okay. but now I hate them. I yeah. hate them. Uh, they're a bit... They're, yeah. I, I'm with you. Like, I, if I was an arm amputee, I wouldn't use a prosthetic personally. No. So talk about what it was like having an arm prosthetic. Yeah. So that is very unique. Um, it's, it's very strange. I think my mom encouraged me to get a prosthetic when I was a kid because she wanted me to experience. She thought like maybe that would make me feel better about myself or maybe help me feel more normal. But in reality, it was just really, really weird 
because I grew up learning how to do things with one hand and like my stump. And like, for me, that is like a multi-purpose tool that is better than any hand. And um, I, I, even to this day, I have a prosthetic and sometimes I'll wear it if I have to, like for comedic effect maybe. Mm -hmm. But even then, I, I just don't know how to do things because it's like if, if for instance, if I just gave an able-bodied person an extra arm, they wouldn't know how to use it. Like you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't be hard. able to do anything. Not to mention it's very expensive and very uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, and you know what? If you want to wear a prosthetic arm, go for it. But like when someone wears a suit, say a male or whatever, and they've got their prosthetic arm, it's kind of weird. It looks a bit yeah. like in the way come sometimes. And I always mm. think of Chubbs Peterson of... Um, Oh, happy Gilmore. Gilmore with the wooden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my good. <laughs> I have seen your prosthetic from uh, seeing some of your uh, comedy on your Facebook page, which is Madeline yeah. Stewart for people who want to check it out. You do some really funny stuff. Um, but it doesn't look natural. It and I, doesn't. I want, do you, let's talk about personalizing a cosmetic prosthetic because the skin tone of it, has did it age like paper a little bit? It went. It's not. It's like not a natural skin color. Yeah. Do they match it, that to you? Do they match the size of it? Is it meant to be personalized? Yes, it is actually meant to be personalized. And I have a problem in that I'm very pale and very petite, and I have very bony little hands. Um, and when I go to when I went to the prosthetic hand man, pretty much they will they will measure your hand. They will like scan your hand. And they try and make it as proper, like exactly the same as they can. Mm. They even get swabs out, you know, like um, swatches, like when you paint your house. He just like came oh. in with all these skin <laughs> swatches. None of them were white enough. From and none of his, yeah, none of them were white enough. None of his hands were skinny enough. So he's like, you're just going to have a fat, darker hand. And I'm like, why don't you just give <laughs> me a pink hand or a green yeah. hand? Like that would have been easier. Now, that, how, when did you get that prosthetic? Um, slash forearm. Um, I got that when I was uh, 17, 18, because I think the government um, subsidizes a small amount of prosthetic limbs until the age of 16 or 18 or something. Okay. And then after that, you're on your own. So really, it was my only chance Man. to get one. Is and I'm like, I'm amazed. Right? Oh, yeah, they're like $30,000 to $75,000. Well, oh, Hang on. My because yeah. you better tell me the fingers move via your brain on that one. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, 75,000, it's like your thumb will move. That's oh. it. And so the thumb moves yeah. when you pick up. Talk me through it. So do you know how I might be putting it on the spot, but how does the no. ones with the fingers that move work? Well, I, it's been years since I've had one of these arms. So they've probably updated, but knowing... Probably 3D printing now would be able to get closer. Yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully. But um, uh, when I was, when I had a prosthetic arm that moved, they would have these sensors that would attach on the inside of the socket against my stump. And so when I wiggled, okay, so, oh, I don't know how to describe this. Grab, put your hand around your forearm right yep. now and then mm -hmm. wiggle your fingers and you can yep. feel the bones in your forearm moving. Yeah. So my and bones in my forearm... Yeah, so my tendon to my forearm will move and I can control that and that will control how, um, how much your hand opens and closes. Wow. It's very Whack. weird. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I've always... It's an incredible seen, technology. You see them on the news, you know, the good news story on, on the nine news, like, hey, great developments in limb deficient people and they have all like their hands moving and then you never see, like, yeah. you, know, you go out, it's like, oh, it'll be available in 2032. Oh, it's... But it's not, it's not accessible for your everyday person because we, yeah. can't, we can't pay for that kind of stuff. And the government isn't really subsidizing or helping us. And, if, well, now we have NDIS. And I guess they would help if you got it on your plan. But that's another thing. You'd have to try and get it on your plan. Mm. <laughs> when did you just put down the arm? When did you go, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my stump. And this is, I, I don't want this to be, was there an age or a moment? Uh, I think it was, it was throughout. I think I, even when I was in kindergarten, I remember playing in the school playground and ripping off my arm, giving it to the teacher and playground duty being like, I don't want to, I don't want this anymore. So it's like the entire time I didn't really like it, but I definitely 
I tried to give it another go when I was 16, when I got this new arm and it lasted like what, two months. And mm. I'm like, never, ever, ever, ever again. Yeah. I don't need that. This might, I don't know the exact stats, but um, I feel like, I guess the leg amputees are probably more commonplace in the community. You might see it a bit more and it's obviously easier to hide as well. So people like wear jeans or whatever, and you might not know they're a leg amputee. How did you go? Um, did you ever like, were you ever self-conscious about the fact that you had one arm and did it affect your dating life? Oh yeah, absolutely. You're literally just covering all of my stand up material. <laughs> um, I, Oh my gosh. I think we don't, all feel don't give us the gear. Don't give us the gear too much because you're about to do <laughs> no, it. No, no, no. I've got yeah, to good. do my set. I'm holding back. Good. I can, see you. I can see you going, I'm not going to give my phone. I can't, I can't give you anything. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think uh, we all feel self-conscious about ourselves, no matter if we have a disability or not. And I think just teenage years are even more heightened um and i'm not sure about you dylan but i hated going to clubs like going out clubbing because everybody really really looks at you when you're clubbing in those yep. situations um and so that's something i hated um, especially when they the person is a bit effed up like they might have had a few too many beers or other things right and they go if they had too many subtle. beers and then they realize you've got one arm they lose their minds. So when I'm at yeah. a festival and they look up and they can't see anything, they look down and see me. Oh my God, they scream. They're like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like a ghost. Cause they're just, yeah. they've had so many beers. I don't notice. Yeah. Yeah. People, people are really weird. Um, <laughs> but no, I think, I think dating, it got easier as I got older and the more mature other people around me became. And I just kind of learned to, I, you, you see the red flags and you can kind of pick the people you don't really want to date i guess but then yeah it can be it can be a bit daunting and obviously because i can't hide it i've just learned to to love it and i think there's also a pressure off as well like there's a lot of pressure on women to look perfect and to be born with a body who which isn't like magazine perfect it takes a lot of pressure off me to like conform to beauty standards mm. and i just myself what is uh because you've you've it's up to your forearm, right? It's below yeah. the elbow. Yeah. So do you, do you mind if we say it? Yeah. The context? This is it. There you go. There it is. Okay, great. Now we can. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Can it's you like bend it? it? Can so, you hold, oh, sorry. You go. I'll pick it up later. I was going to say, um, can you bend it to hold something in yeah. there? Like what yeah, kind of... I can bend. I like yeah. hook my little shopping bag over when I go shopping. There you go. I was wondering what purposes you can do you still type get out of Or one hand typer? <laughs> I'm a one hand typer. That okay. is way too clunky. <laughs> Maddie, who works at Able Foods, uses both. Oh, and she's in the same same area that you are in terms of amputation. There you go. That's incredible. Oh, well. Shout out to Maddie from Able Foods. Check it out at Able Foods. Plug. Um, <laughs> so, can I can I ask? Um, oh, what was I going to say? Again? Oh, do, so are you open online about the fact that you have one arm? Like, there's pictures of you having one yeah. arm. Do you, ha, talk about. Have you had any? Um, again, if it's in your stand up, don't mention it. But have you had any problems or any creeps get around you? in terms of the devotee world? Oh yeah, yeah. That is definitely, like I didn't know that there was such like a weird, there's a weird attraction to people who are amputees. And I had no idea until I was older than I want to admit. And I was just like, what is this world on Reddit? And it, it's insane. I, I definitely considered a career in it when I was like, during COVID. I'm like, can mm. I sell pictures of this? Like, good. pay my rent. Good, good, um, good, good cash, to be honest. Good, good I've, heard, I've heard some big numbers yeah. being thrown around from other amputees. Well, a previous episode um, was yeah. a lady like Kelly Cartwright, who's a good friend of mine. She's a Paralympic gold medalist, amazing mum. People are like, hey, can you put whipped cream on the end of your stump? Oh. And, I'll and, give you like a thousand bucks. And Cherie, who's a leg amputee up to the hip, had been offered up to a thousand dollars cash for yeah. a five minutes of her walking around or on crutches in her room, a video. Oh my God. It's kind of, it's really gross. And we want to keep like morally would never do it. Yeah. But I reckon at one point, if I got poor enough, <laughs> would <Fine>. consider. <laughs> well, Kelly did admit a six figure sum would make her change. Yeah. Her mind. yeah. yeah. Six yeah. figures. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, bad. That's good. Um, we're really excited to showcase your comedy. Obviously, I'm 
I mean, I've had a smile on my face the whole time that hey, we've been chatting already. You're good talent, by the way. Not very naturally funny. Good, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you do much, like, obviously you do stand-up, but have you yeah. worked in the media much? Do you... No, I, I sometimes talk uh, to companies about um, inclusivity and, like, social behaviour around disability, but um, I would love to work in the media. I'm just sitting at home. If anyone wants to hit me yeah. up, ask me yeah. to host some things, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> we'll, give you, we'll give you the plug. We'll give you the plug after. But before we get your comedy, talk to me through, you said at the start how you do accessible comedy for people. So mm. what oh, do yeah. these gigs entail? Like, give, give us the story behind that. Okay. So uh, last year, I decided to open up a comedy club called Crips and Creeps. <laughs> um, nice. I I know Dylan, you're not like a a, a cripple. No, no, I'm with you. Fan, no, no. But creeps and creeps, creeps and creeps. Quite fun. clever. Yeah, that's clever. I, yeah. I was quite it's clever. a play on a it's a play for people to, on a gang. Um, yeah, that yeah, yeah, that's in, very, in Los Angeles. Very good. Very good. Yeah, so I yeah we're called Crips and Creeps. Uh, creeps and cripple. Creeps is in anyone yeah. who is marginalised in any way. Those devotees um, coming down. Yeah, so. Uh, it all started uh, because I had friends, you know, just like Oliver Hunter, who would tell me how they would just like ditch their wheelchair at the bottom of the stairs, crawl the way up and then just like work. And I don't think it's right that anyone should have to sacrifice their dignity to go to their workplace and like perform. And it also comes from a space where it's starting, it was, it was definitely starting to get a little bit tense around being uh, a female in comedy, it can be sometimes quite unsafe and uh, a bit worrying. And I just wanted to create a space where my performers can feel safe and um, included and uh, free to perform and be themselves, no matter if they're um, a female, no matter whether their, se their sexual orientation, their cultural background, anything, they can come and perform and be safe. But also a place where my audience can come and feel like they don't have to be worried about anyone doing really gross material or anyone being weirdly aggressive in the audience. But we also supply Auslan interpreting. Awesome. And it's it's incredible. If you haven't seen comedy with Auslan, it's worth oh. it's worth it. I tell you what's up, comedy in Auslan and rap with Auslan. They're my top favorite oh. forms of Auslan. Because <laughs> they they do an incredible like it's so hard. Do you know mm. what I mean? And to get to to get the nuance of sarcasm and that into into yeah. the way they do the Auslan. They've got to use their face and that. It's incredible to see, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, yeah. And we, we have like a partnership where a lot of students are, are practicing the Auslan oh, for cool. the shows as well. Um, but it's also great because we see a lot of like the audience members, of course, people with disability and people who are marginalized. But um, we also get a lot of like able-bodied teenage people like young people come in and for a lot of them it's their first time being around or like being in a in a environment that is welcoming like that and it's their first experience with people with disability a lot of them and mm. so they're kind of learning without learning if that makes mm. sense they're, they're they're giving they're giving space for people to speak about their lives and share their lived experiences there is a correlation as well worldwide with comedy clubs and mm. inaccessibility, isn't it? Oh, oh like, yeah. I'm telling you. It's always a small room upstairs. Or no, down or in a cellar. Yeah. yeah. They're always inaccessible, aren't yeah. they? When yeah. When you think about it. So yeah. I guess, I mean, I've been to like the comedy, is it called the comedy cellar? The one in New York? Like, and it like is brutal to get down mm. to. Like, yeah, there's always different Or ways. the Rhino room in Adelaide. Yeah. Steps. Yeah. yeah. Adelaide. I just it's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, that's why I needed to make it because I was like, too many of my friends can't come to see shows. Well, Good. it's an amazing thing that you're doing and you are very funny. And uh, when you're, we should also mention you're nominated, uh, we, which we, you were very excited about. Somebody uh, put yeah. us in contact through on the social saying, I've been following this girl, Madeline Shields' Facebook page for a while. She's hilarious. I'd love to hear her do a Listen Able episode. And I messaged oh. you too. And you were like, I'm nominated? Yeah. Which is, really, which is a great thrill Wait, for me to read random? the book. Yeah, just, you, you, didn't, you didn't know the person who it was. No way, that's mm. sick. Um, oh, it's so cool. Wait, I thought uh, it was from Madeline's burner account. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Sandra. <laughs> I love this girl. No, he's definitely a fan of yours. And, uh, and then we said to you, like, we, we, we gave Ollie, who was very excited to have uh, a set on our show. And we're getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of downloads of this podcast, which is super exciting. 
and uh, we'd nice love flex. we'd love to hear. Well, it's, it's it's a great platform, and we'd love to hear if you would are willing uh, some of your comedy set around um, your disability. Be, yeah, if, if that's okay with you, we'd love to give you this little moment to sit back and smile. Smash Imagine. It, Imagine if I was just like, yeah, nah, I'm cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. Nah, you just, just cancel the Zoom. You're like, nah, I'm yeah, good. Like, like, no, catch, me on my face, catch me on my Facebook. Yeah. See ya. It's on my Facebook. Here's the link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline Stewart, take it away in your own time. Oh, thanks. Uh, so, guys, um, hi. Great to be here. Great to do stand-up on the onlines. Very, very scary. No audience. Um, it's okay. I'm used to silence. Um, so... I, as we mentioned before, I was born. I was born with this with this arm. It's great. Uh, my mum, she wasn't aware, but she had to keep me. The hospital had that policy. <laughs> They're like, you break it, you buy it. So <laughs> stuck with me. But I, I often think that having an arm like this is it can be a bit of a curse. It can. Um, it's mostly because it looks it looks quite phallic. Those of you who, are, who aren't watching the mm. the video. It's phallic. I, mm-hmm. I can't express it in any other way. It looks like E.T. I, I agree. It's E.T.'s dick, okay? <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it gets, it's so awkward because I love it whenever anyone sends me a dick pic, I just send one right back, right back. Oh, very good. <laughs> they don't like it, but um, yeah, there it is. Uh, but I, as we were talking about before, people get quite weird. People start to get like a bit frightened around people with disability. And um, uh, and sometimes it can be difficult dating. Like my friend, a friend of mine, Rihanna, she's a wheelchair user, and she, I said to her, "What's what's the hardest part? Do you reckon?" And she goes, mm, mm, "Wheel beach wheelchairs." And I'm like, "What do you mean, like beach wheelchairs?" And she goes, "Well, well, well, this is this is the thing." She told me that every Sunday her favorite thing to do was to go down to the beach and wave over the hottest lifeguard she could find (laughs) to lift her into the water. And she was like, that is my Sunday. But now, now there's beach wheelchairs and I will never get a date again. And she's about the only person I know who's been cock blocked by the city of Sydney. Like, (laughs) poor thing. But people do, they get weird. They get weird. They say to me, what's your preferred term? Do you prefer like handicapped? Do you prefer limb deficient? And I'm like, no, I prefer mutant. I do. <laughs> I do. It makes me feel like one of the X-Men, except my, my, special, my special thing is I get $2.50 train fares. Mm. Take that Wolverine. I've got you. <laughs> um, but I, I think that people do ask very weird personal questions when they see you have a disability. Uh, most common is, which hand do you write with? <laughs> it's the only one, the only one I have, guys. It's the only, uh, we need to declare this, I write with my only hand. Um, <laughs> stop asking me. And the second one is like, they often say to me like, oh, how do you, how do you have sex? And I'm like, what are you doing diving in with two hands like oh i've got to explore these crevices and have a little swim no like i have sex the same as everyone else drunken in the dark i i do um but i i think it can be it can be quite difficult when you're on a when you're on a blind date because i don't know whether i should send them a text beforehand and be like hey just so you know i'm missing something dignity um i i i just decide to turn up i just turn up and i'm like surprise and just see how they react um i remember i went on a a date where the guy was like oh it's fine i don't care that you have one up but you're a comedian right and i'm like oh god red flag he's like i have a joke you can use it in your set if you like and never ask comedians if, if they want your jokes we don't they're terrible <laughs> jokes but it was a date so i had to be really nice and this guy was like okay let me tell you the joke and i'm like this is weird like if i went on a date with a vet by the way i wouldn't be like you're a vet i hit a cat on the way here do you want it you can have it practice your craft <laughs> no um so i was very i was very nice you'd like to, you'd be pleased to know and i was like okay tell me your joke here's your moment and this was a joke he said What's better than winning three gold in the Paralympics? What? Not being disabled. 
Oh, very good. I know. Rule number one, oh. pick oh. your audience. Um, <laughs> but oh. the worst part is, is I use that joke in my set, aren't yeah. I? Look at me, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. Um, I would also just like to finish this set by telling a little Dylan Olcott story. Oh, yes. yes. This is what we want. Yes. I went, I I went on a I date. I hope I wasn't a dick. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Funny you should say that. It, listen to this story. I went on this date with this guy and he was one of those really posh guys. Ryan, if you're listening, it was you. He was on a really, <laughs> he was really quite posh and he was just like, I love tennis. But, you know, he didn't really love tennis. He loved the social, like the social standard that liking tennis got him. <laughs> and so it's like, I love tennis. And I'm like, oh, really? That's, um, I don't really watch tennis, but I love Dylan Alcott. And he was like, oh, Dylan Alcott seems like such a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Ship like, off, Ryan. Nailed it, Ryan. I was like, what? And I broke up with him because yes. I will never date a guy oh. who thinks that Dylan Alcott is a dickhead. <laughs> You're a national treasure, Dylan. You should be oh. treasured. <laughs> oh, and so God. now when I go on dates, I say to people, what do you think of Dylan Alcott? Like as a start <laughs> off. That's the standard. 60% it of is. people say dickhead. That's <laughs> Uh, uh, Madeline oh, Stewart. Hey, I mean, we hold on. This so episode much. is our main one. This is yeah, shit. Yeah, Dylan like that. <laughs> Madeline, you're very good, that's and we're not just saying funny. that because you're in our yeah, in our views. studio. That was some oh, good shit. Thanks funny, for man. having me, boys. Before you go, we have a bowl of uncomfortable, and I think this is going to be a fun question. I hope. Oh, goodness. I might be wrong. So this is where someone sends us a question anonymously, or they can put their name to it if they want, but they want to know about you, knowing that you don't have a forearm. Ooh. Now, usually these can be quite, you know, scandalous, sad, emotional. I think this one is really interesting because I hadn't thought about it. And I was like, what? Mm. My name is Prue. What up, Prue? How do you cut and eat with cutlery? Oh, I use a splayed. You know, the, sp the spoon oh, knife? Yes. What? Yes. You use a splayed? Because it's like knife and fork. You know, to cut a steak or something. Like, do you oh, cut your meat first? I, I become, if I'm at a restaurant and I order yeah. a steak, I become the biggest diva. And I'm like, could you ask the kitchen to cut that up for me? <laughs> oh. I'm too good for this. Uh, so there you go. So you ask the kitchen to cut it. Yeah, I do. That makes sense. And a splayed, what's... It's, it's like a spork. It's a, it's a spoon fork with the knife on the... out. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody has no. these. What the hell is... I've never, I've never seen a spoon. No. Oh, my... Oh my god, I was just gonna go, be like, go. should I I'm gonna get quickly I'm getting yes. it. Hold on one second. What a great oh. question. I knew it. Asking the kitchen. That's very good. Yeah. So this is one of the benefits of COVID is that uh, Madis, Madeline's doing this from home. Yeah. So, so she, she can go, go to a kitchen. I, and sorry, sorry, I'm back. Um, whew, bit of a jog there. This is it. This is the splay. Yo, that's sharp that's a, on the side. I've never seen yeah. one that sharp. You just like cut oh, it. I didn't know that there was like a serrated sharp edge. I knew a sharp spork. Edge. I didn't I know, know a spork. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. So you can, it's the one, one fits all utensil. Yeah. It's, it's like true. a Swiss army knife of cutlery. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried everything. I've tried everything. All the things that the children's hospital said to buy, mm. none of them work. This that's, was the. That's yeah. the best thing about this, about Listen Able. I've learned multiple things. Number one, what a splay is. And number two, that Ryan's a flog. <laughs> Dylan's really caught up on Ryan. <laughs> what, what tennis club does yeah. Ryan go to? Hey, I'm going <laughs> to eliminate him. I'm going to eliminate him. I'm going to get oh him back God. then. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline Stewart, the Facebook page hey. exists. Is there a website? Oh, there isn't a website at the moment, but you can follow me on Instagram right. or What's Facebook. That? What's Instagram? I'm trying to find you in the top Madeline Stewart. I'm not kidding. Is a SeaWorld Gold Coast professional whale, whale water skier. Oh. Well, obviously, that that's you? me. No, oh, yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. Is that your <laughs> oh, yeah. It's what, Madeline yours? Stewart with an E-W-A-R-T. Um, and uh, my little tag is Miss Maddie Cakes, like patty cakes. I don't know. I thought it was oh, clever, but now yeah. I just feel like a fool. <laughs> well, make sure you get around you on the socials. Uh, if people want to come to Crips and Creeps. Yeah, Crips and Creeps. It's it's on a little break at the moment because of COVID of world, but it will be back and it's going to be amazing. We've got some sick grants. We're going to get some merch. It's going to be crazy. Yes. And uh, yeah. 
all yeah. the announcements will be made on your Facebook group. Yeah, sure, Facebook sure. and Instagram, you can find us, Crips and Creeps. Done. It's an absolute pleasure to have you come and cheer up this podcast. Get and her get on radio. Find some genuine laughs. And if our boss is get listening, her on, Gemma. Get her a good gig. It could be a good oh, gig out there for Please you. employ me, guys. It's COVID. <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> would you do, do you do like Melbourne Comedy Fest stuff? Would you? Oh, you? we were going to do Melbourne Comedy this year, but it was cancelled. Crips and Creeps know, was going to Melbourne. We know some people. Oh, oh, Uzi, yeah. Uzi, Uzi Studios. Yeah, huh? Uzi. You know, we'll, we'll get we'll get you in. Anya, we'll get, thank you we'll so much, in. Madeline. <laughs> thank you so much for having me.